Welcome back to the Claim Your Right podcast for the Mama Writer Wannabe, where we grant ourselves permission to put down perfection and pick up the pen. I believe that writers are born to write, even busy mamas whose daily commute is riding the hot mess express. My belief is firmly rooted in the eternal truth written on every writer's soul, that the simple act of writing can be healing, transforming, and liberating. Simply by you sitting down and writing, I believe you can change yourself, your family, your community, and maybe even the world. I also believe that embracing your passion and living your life with purpose is one of the best examples you can give to your children. In this podcast, you will find writing hacks, tips, and tricks, coaching and mentorship, goal setting and accountability, a space for the writer in you to flourish, and an opportunity to discover the freedom, both personal and financial, that is rightfully yours. Hi, my name is Christine Holloway, self-published author and writing coach. I help busy moms reclaim the writer within and unlock their true freedom so they can finally start living the writer lifestyle they have always imagined. Welcome, my fellow writers. Let's dive in. I hereby give myself permission to write. No more excuses. No more distractions. No more justified rationalizations. And certainly no more rationalized justifications. It is time to write. I hereby grant myself permission to put down perfection and pick up the pen. No more will I let my doubts prevail. No more will I second guess the creativity inside of me. No more will I entertain the ridiculous thoughts that constitute my imposter syndrome. It is time to write now. I hereby grant myself permission to make mistakes so that I may learn from them. I hereby grant myself permission to acknowledge that writing may be one of the hardest things that I will ever do in my life. Yet, it is essential to my soul. I hereby grant myself permission to embrace the writer within. I hereby grant myself permission to write. Hey, Mama Writers. That is a little thing that I wrote called the Permission to Write or Permission Pledge. Uh, You are absolutely welcome to write that all down and make your own little pledge. It is a part of the Write Blueprint 7 Days to Series kit, but you don't have to purchase it to use it. Just go ahead and feel free to write it down and sign it and date it. And it is a permission pledge to yourself. Um, At the top of the permission to write, I have a quote from Robert Louis Stevenson, and it says, The artist must now step down, don his working clothes, and become the artisan. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about this episode. Um, To be a writer, you've got to write. We talked a little bit about this last episode, but the bottom line is, is dreaming about writing and thinking about your ideas and having the story in your head or having the vision of yourself as the world famous author in your head. None of that translates to reality until you actually sit down and start putting words on the paper. So as hard as that is (laughs) to realize, it can be very freeing. But I kind of wrote the permission to write pledge to address and kind of tackle some of the things that keep us as writers stuck in our own imaginations, stuck in our own heads. So I just wanted to kind of go through it um, and start off with, yeah, excuses. The number one enemy of any writer is the excuses that we tell ourselves when we're not writing, why we're not writing. Some of them are legitimate, but the bottom line comes down to most of them are just excuses. Most of them are just ways that we tell ourselves We're not doing what we were born to do 
because of X, Y, and Z. And I encourage you to stop the excuses. Part of that is recognizing the excuses. Um, Maybe even write them down. There you go. (laughs) Writing exercise number one. Write down all the excuses that you have given yourself over the last year, even the last week, uh, the last five years, whatever time frame that you haven't been writing when you want to be writing and recognize what you're telling yourself, how you are rationalizing, not doing the work. And the second part of that is no more distractions. And we touched a little bit on distractions in the last episode and they're huge. Um, Yes, we are living in the future. Basically, we can be distracted if we allow ourselves to be every waking moment of the day. We're, you know, we have the phones that everyone's addicted to and they go with us everywhere. And we have any movie or TV show or documentary, anything that we would want to watch or listen to is literally at our fingertips. Might have to pay for it, you know, but more than likely you're going to find some iteration uh, between all the different platforms. And not only that, but we live extraordinarily busy lives. Uh, Obviously this past year that's shifted a lot, but be it, you know, pre-2020 where we had you know, jam-packed schedules every day, the kids, the soccer practice, the lunches, the, you know, just trying to make dinner after getting home from work or if you, um, just everything. We, we all know. Uh, we all know pre-2020, post-2020. Now that might look a little bit different, but that doesn't mean we're any less busy. Um, some of the ways to kind of help with that is to get some processes, um, some systems in place, get yourself a little bit organized so that you do have the time to write. Some of it is maybe you let stuff go. Maybe, you know, that put down perfection means that your house doesn't have to be spotless, which I'm pretty sure everybody has embraced that (laughs) mentality a lot more. We've all embraced a much more relaxed mentality, I believe, after this last year. At least I hope so. Um, because it's good good for us uh, to not be neurotic about certain things. So back to permissions. Um, there's that perfection again. And this will be a general theme coming back up over and over. Um, but I hereby grant myself permission to put down perfection and pick up the pen. Uh, we talked about this last episode, but I'm going to reiterate it uh, because it's so important. Your ideas of perfection are getting in the way, period. Now, there's different levels of perfection, obviously. Like I mentioned, you know, writing the first seven chapters seven or eight times in a story to make it perfect before I could go on to the end is not acceptable. And that doesn't mean your finished product that's going to go out, whether it's submitting to an agent or putting it up on Amazon, uh, isn't going to be a much better version. But a rough draft is called a rough draft for a reason. And a lot of your perfection can come in the editing. Now, obviously, (laughs) there are... uh, you know, editing is a whole couple podcasts in and of themselves. It can be very difficult and most writers don't even want to consider the idea of editing, but um, it's how you get better. It's how your writing becomes what you truly want it to be for yourself and for your readers. No more will I let my doubts prevail. No more will I second guess the creativity inside of me. So my mama writers, you have to stop second guessing yourselves. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your writing. You have to know that what you're doing 
is what you were meant to do. You have to remember it. You have to feel it. Now, that being said, you know, there is an aspect of fake it till you make it. I have three stories, four if you include my adult fiction, uh, on Amazon right now. And they're not perfect. And there, yeah, there probably could be changes made. And I might very well do that. But sometimes you just have to leap. And yeah, the third aspect of this paragraph is imposter syndrome. And this is something that a lot of writers go through. Uh, what's interesting is I mentioned yesterday that I hi, you know, I hid my writing, my writing self a lot over the years. And some of the things that I believed, I thought only I could, I believe them. Fears about just general fears about having people read my writing and, you know, are people going to see who I really am, et cetera, et cetera, fill in the blank. One of those was absolutely imposter syndrome. Like they're all going to know. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not a good writer and I should stick to managing, go into the legal field and deal with lawyers all day. But what was funny was, and this was a while ago, this was about 10 years ago, and it helped me start to shift how I was looking at writing. But my best friend and I were talking about it, and she, like I mentioned, I went to school for management and legal studies, you know, to get a real job. And then I would write after that, I guess, when I retired or whatever. Um, but my friend went to school for English, and we were talking one day about... And it was a big deal for me to like open this up, you know, like to share this with my secret, you know, my secrets, my writing secrets. And um, she's like, most writer, like a lot of writers have the same feeling. And I'm like, what? And then quite frankly, you know, obviously Google or the Internet really, you know, you can you can Google it now and you can just see everyone's, you know, who's ever writers who have blogs or interviews you know, this general idea that it's um, the neuroses are across the board. Like we uh, writers as a as a category of humans ha generally have, you know, these certain idiosyncrasies, if you will. Um, but yes, imposter syndrome was a big one. And sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it. In a lot of the stuff that I've learned in the last couple of years, the articles is, you know, major writers still have imposter syndrome. Like it doesn't go away. Like once even, you know, even if you are living the writer life, you're still going to have those same feelings when you publish your next book um, or your fifth book or your 20th book. Like you're still essentially, you, it might get easier. You probably find more ways to deal with it, um, better coping mechanisms. So you're not like a complete mess on launch day or, you know, when you send it to five agents, but it very well could always be there. And that's good to keep in mind that you're not alone, that this is just part of the process. This is part of this is the hard part of the process. Hopefully, we can all get to a point where we don't have it. However, I I do also believe that the imposter syndrome that a lot of us feel, because uh, it's not just writers, there's imposter syndrome, everyone feels it at, at one point or another for different things. So there's there's a deeper meanings behind it. So just know you're not alone. And it's something that we'll definitely be covering because I am plagued by imposter syndrome and probably will be my entire life um, and just work through it. Just push past it, push through it. Um, mistakes. I hereby grant myself permission to make mistakes so that I may learn from them. I don't know if this is more prevalent now or if it's always been this way, but so many people, and this probably goes back to the perfection, but it's 
just this idea that everything has to be right the first time. And if it's not, you might as well just throw in the towel. And that could not be farther from the truth. It's a difficult mind shift, but I have really been looking at mentors and people that do, you know, like the right articles that we need to look at failure and mistakes in a whole new way that we should be embracing our failures because now, you know, it doesn't work. You know, now, you know how to do it better. Like I can tell you 8 million times how to do X, Y, and Z, but until you make the mistake yourself and have the repercussions from that, you might not learn that lesson. It might have to be uh, the world's, the universe, whatever, that teaches you that lesson. And that's okay. So it's okay to make mistakes and you're going to make them. And don't worry about it. You learn from them. You dust yourself off and you keep right on going. So I hereby grant myself permission to acknowledge that writing may be one of the hardest things I will ever do in life, yet it is essential for my soul. And I truly believe that. Writing can be painful. It can be hard physically, emotionally, mentally. If you're doing it right, it can be extremely difficult. But once you get through that, that's where your soul is going to find it's peace. That's where you're going to get the calm. Writing can be cathartic. It can help you work through those emotions, work through those ideas. I hereby grant myself permission to embrace the writer within. I spent the better part of my life holding the hand of my writer within, and I did not embrace her. I hid her away because I wanted to keep her safe, and I wanted to keep her pure. And at the same time, she couldn't flourish. She couldn't grow. She couldn't be the writer that she was supposed to be until I truly embraced her as myself. And finally, I hereby grant myself permission to write. And that is the key to it all. You have to be the one to do this for yourself. It can't be a spouse. It can't be a parent. It can't be a mentor, a teacher. Um, can't even be me. Unless you need, like, if you need it, yes. I am granting everyone. I am granting you all the permission to write. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's going to be as impactful as you doing it for yourself. And that leads us to claiming your right. You have to make the choice that this is who you are and this is what you want to do and you need to make it a priority and that's okay. Don't let yourself feel guilty. Don't let yourself feel guilty. Just accept it, embrace it, and claim it. Within that, you have to acknowledge that it is your life. You have the agency. This is your life. If writing is what you want to do, if, if it's what your heart tells you you need to be doing, then you need to do it for yourself. No one's going to give you the permission. No one's going to give it to you. You have to take it. You have to claim it because that's how it works. No one can give it to you. You have to claim it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review, please. Thanks. Hey, Mama. One last thing before you go. If you enjoyed this show, please share this with someone you might know who is also struggling to reclaim the writer within and might find value in the content. Because I am hoping everyone makes the right resolution this new year, I am offering discounted coaching sessions for the entire month of January. So if you need some help mapping out your story or organizing your thoughts, I am available. Whether you need a gentle hand or a drill sergeant, I am here for it. Find out more at christineholloway.com where you can also find more resources. The link is in the show notes. 
Thanks so much for your support and happy writing. Thank you.